PR Stoppers Talk Startups, featuring Tim Johnson, President of Appraise Marketing and Public Relations. Here is our host, Dex Simon. In this episode, we're going to take a look at working with smaller startups and how you can get the best results for them in that scenario. So Tim, what are some of your top tips? Well, I love working with startups because the people have all of this energy uh, they're often uh, technically focused, and so they really need help and know they need help. So that creates a great environment to work with. Um, what we focus on is trying to get a lot of the basics in place. Uh, so, for example, many of these companies have never talked to media. So we obviously are very focused on getting media going and getting them trained, getting them prepared, working on their key messages, working on how they present themselves. And then getting a lot of the other basics going, getting their social media going, getting their speakers program going, getting a decent content development program going. So for many of them, just getting the basics off the ground is a big step. Yeah, so we've spoken to people at larger agencies and being at a smaller agency yourself, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of that in the process? I assume being nimble is one of them, but how does that work to gain the startup's confidence for you? Uh, well, nimble is definitely one. We move, we can move very quickly and they move very quickly. Sometimes within a matter of weeks, the business model that they told us about at first is, is in, the, in the trash and they've got a totally new one and we need to respond to that uh, quickly. Um, I think something that small agencies bring is I have about 40 years of experience and a, co- a company with a budget of five to ten thousand dollars a month, wouldn't get anywhere near somebody with my level of experience at, at, at a big agency. No, that that makes a lot of sense. You know, one of the things that you pride yourself on is trying to work within those smaller budgets, but still give them larger budget impact, especially mm-hmm. in the startup world where there might be a charismatic leader, or so we hope. You mm-hmm. know, but it's typically the founder who's involved when you're in startup mode. Um, Mm -hmm. How do you try and be a force multiplier for the budget? Well, we we try to uh, outthink and be more creative than our competitors with bigger budgets. And for most of our clients, our clients are are the smaller ones in the competition. Um, We're competing against companies that are often very well funded. So as an example, we went to a media event before CES. a lot of our, for one client, one of our, their competitors was there, had a big space. We had a teeny space. So what we did is we brought in three TV monitors and had an NCAA tournament on the whole time. Um, and so our booth was packed the entire evening because all of the reporters would rather be watching NCAA than being at the media event. Um, and because it was media only, every business card that we scanned w- was on target for us. That's a good creative example, you know, one of the other things that can be challenging for a smaller company is keeping talent. Right now, it's very competitive from talent. You're in the Oakland area, mm-hmm. while the whole pandemic has had extremely uneven impacts mm-hmm. on communications. You know, in the startup space, it sort of mm-hmm. forced a lot of startups to come forward with new ideas, new thinking. Mm-hmm. How do you go about keeping talent, recruiting talent, and keeping them happy? We do, we do a few things and we try to create an environment that uh, will make them want to come in the first place and stay. Um, and I think about when I was an account executive, what did I want in my environment? And what did I get that I liked? And what did I get that I, that I didn't like? And that goes to everything from where your well, office what is. What were some of those things? What are some of the likes for the employee of today who's starting out and maybe their dislikes that you try and avoid so the people mm-hmm. watching this can say, hey, we've got to avoid doing this. Oops, okay. I've done that. You know, yeah. Give them some recognition. Um, well, it's even where your office space is. So I've always had office space near Market Street in San Francisco because it's where all of the BART lines and bus lines congregate. So it makes it easy for people to get to work. So that's a very basic thing. Another is we have very personalized training Uh, So every person has an individualized training plan that we update on a quarterly basis. Um, And then in a more general sense, every day I'm thinking about our value proposition as an agency and what are we doing for for our people? No, that's interesting. Now, the individual training program, you don't hear a lot of that because people sometimes said organizations have their training system, Mm -hmm. if you will, that they're trying to fit people into. 
Mm-hmm. What are some of the factors you take into consideration when you do the individualized training? Well, I look at the accounts that they're on and I look at the, the accounts that they, they want to be on and I'm very focused on where they want to take their career. So I had a person who came in and at first wanted to focus on media relations and writing and we were able to accommodate that. And then a year into her tenure said, I really wanted to get into web design. So we've sent her to web design school on Friday afternoons and, um, and we let her use our website as, as a guinea pig while she was learning. Yeah, and it really seems like having engaged employees who would appreciate that kind of flexibility as their interests evolve, that might show up for an organization in dealing with the clients. Because as a client, you want people who are passionate, fired up mm-hmm. and really focused. Yes, it, exactly. And we also try to treat them like adults. So if they need to take two hours to go to a doctor's appointment, we don't track whether they do the extra two hours at some other time. We just assume that they'll make it up when they when they need to make it up. Yeah, Tim, in our remaining time, could you sort of give some feedback, some free advice for people who are CEOs at startups about some of the most important things they need to be thinking about that they might not currently be thinking about? I think they need to think about investing in in marketing and devoting the time that's necessary to make it successful. A a, a good agency will will pick and choose when they need the CEO, but when they say they need the CEO, he or she really needs to appear. And if you look at successful startups, they're often the ones where the CEO is willing to do that. You talk about how talented the younger people coming in on your team and how to learn from them. just a good thing. I feel that I didn't have to compete with them when I got out of school because that would have been really challenging. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and ideas. Thanks for having me. 